All right, so I'm going to just take you all through uh, where I'm at with the project. I'm building the Just Aircraft Super Stall. I've got one wing uh, covered, a little bit more tapes to do. And I've got the fuselage uh, covered and uh, just about ready for paint, other than some ironing of the tapes. Now, what I wanted to do, I got the wing here, and uh, I figured this was the last opportunity. I was going to go through all the different parts of the wing that maybe some of the gotchas and things you should do and know that uh, would help other builders that are doing the wings that are actually doing the full wing themselves or maybe getting the uh, quick build wing done in some of the mods or ads you might want to do. So anyway, I'll start um, with one of these stands. You need to definitely have the stand in order to do any work on the wing. It allows you to rotate it. I've got a locking method here so I can lock it so it doesn't roll. I go down to this end and I simply untwist this. It's bottom weight right now so it won't, bottom heavy so it won't turn. So I can rotate the wing in any direction I want and basically turn the locking device and it'll lock and set there. So really, really important to have in order to make the building process a lot easier. All right, so the tank bay, I'll take you through that. Uh, one of the items on the tank bay is I've added the bent angle that I did here. I think I used 020 or 025. And then when you do the smaller edge here, you have to make it uh, not as deep because you gotta make sure you miss, miss the bell crank. Uh, make sure you put the large washers on the ends because if uh, the ball ever, link ever failed, uh, if you didn't have that large washer, it would uh, fall off. And you can see how the spring attachment goes in the cable system. And basically you washer this accordingly so it's the right height on the top but it also is uh, the tank is sometimes twisted a bit so you may need to wash it a little differently one side to the other to make sure that the tank will actually sit flat and it's just riv nuts that are put in there and you have basically a an extension here for the bolt for the actual uh, spring attachment and I put a basic little grommet in this is the adjustment point, the turnbuckle you have on that cable, and that goes down to the actual one of the pulleys. On here you'll see I just did the actual shrink wrap on the cable end only because if you did the whole cable, it doesn't fit in the slot properly. So uh, needless to say, that's what I've done there. The rod ends the same deal. Grease fitting locations you'll see inside, that's uh, in order to get at to keep things uh, lubricated during the lifetime of the airplane. Everything's got torque seal on it. Now in this bay here, you'll notice I've got another bar going across. This actually, the covering is always trying to find the shortest straight distance. So it, it wants to come straight from the top leading edge, uh, the aft end of the leading edge down to the trailing edge straight. So all of a sudden it gets very close to these bolts. So I put this in just to make sure I get that extra clearance to the pulley. It doesn't touch, but I worry in flight or just being parked outside with wind vibration because when it's in flight, I think the covering will suck up a fair bit and keep the clearance. But anyway, I did that just for peace of mind. You'll see the strut attachment, uh, all the cable guides, and then the pulley again here for the uh, bell crank setup on the ailerons. Now on the ailerons, you got to make sure you put this nut here down because if you do it the other way, it's too close to the fabric. Unfortunately, I got to change one that's already covered. Just figure this one out tonight. And the one inside has to be up because it'll foul the end skin if you don't. I put all the um, crimped, two crimps on here just because of the fact I want to make sure it's very well secured. I've got the magnetometer location for the Garmin AOA and what I did is I put a small little shim plate in the back of the top set of rivets there and that just enough to set the angle is about one degree for the wing dihedral to make sure that's actually uh, flat. And I put another cross tube on the ends just to help support the end rib a bit more. I've got a bent plate here that does a lot of the work. This is one of the earlier kits where the rib is actually towed the other way now. Uh, I do like this. I put all nut plates and stuff in here to actually uh, screw the end piece on. So I can take 
it off and get full access to everything, actually access to the magnetometer attach point and so on. Here's the slat locations. And you can see the one on the bottom. I don't think there was anything real special. Um, there is one spot here in the kit. There's no location uh, for anything here. Uh, so the skin would just fly loose. So I've added a plate in there just to make that a little better. And I also did uh, rib nuts for the uh, closure plates here. I've, I've worked all of the closure plates out other than the ones on the flaps. I figure I'll do that after it's covered. But one thing you gotta notice here is that you actually have to turn down, shorten this guy. If you don't, you're gonna have the bell crank system too close. So you gotta shorten that up. So you'll notice I actually cut it down when that went in. Okay. And the same thing up here, I did uh, just rib nuts. And I did rib nuts down here. And you got the same problem, you got real close stuff here and on the corners you gotta cut them short. Uh, you're gonna also have to cut your bolts, your screws short in there. And I'm gonna tape that spar up to eliminate any chance of damage. Because if you put a long screw in, you'll just keep torquing it up and you won't realize you're wrecking your spar. And uh, that's basically the same thing on that one. I've got, uh, not putting a skin on the bottom, it gets fully covered. And of course you can see the reinforcement strip on the end here for the fabric and you can see it as well because that's the end of the fabric there so i'll take you quickly over to the fabric wing for what it looks like so you can see how this all works out nicely i did all flush uh, rivets here for all the nut plates and uh, basically wrapped the fabric right around the tube so that works out pretty good these are rib nuts in the top, so covered them all and actually uh, burnt the holes. You can see the fabric in the bottom and I got everything glued. Glued all the leading edge the whole way through uh, to support the fabric on there. Uh, you can see the tube that I've added to get that distance to the pulley that's in here. And you'll notice all the rivets for the fabric fasteners that I put in. And this is the spot where the bell crank is that I didn't do yet. And I've got it basically turn but it'll sit out here and it actually is very close to the fabric and I don't want to leave it that way on the bottom I've added a full uh, reinforcement plate here and this is going to be for the Garmin AOA if I decide to add it but I do have my other spot that just clears the strut right here it would be probably better on the inside bay or one out I had it on this outer bay but it, it fouled the elevator when I when I folded the wings, I didn't like the idea of making sure the elevator had to, be, had to be neutral. So I moved it in, but it probably would have been better this bay in, and I think that's kind of where the factory shows it. Um, so anyway, but I put the other one out farther because I think that was even better again for the, uh, the Garmin Pito and AOA. So. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. This is about six months in. It's going well, and hopefully that little bit of information on the wing helps everybody out a fuselage not a whole lot i did differently i showed pictures on the forum on that so this is uh, an access to get inside a little bit easier to do work on the elt this is my uh, static ports and just basically the way it looks inside or interior fabric and such as well as the ELT, or sorry, the transponder location and such. So, anyway, I'll do a little bit of scanning around the root ribs and such. These have got to all come off and be deburred, but they are all been fitted. Everything in the plane has been together already. So, they're ready for basically paint once I clean them up. Holes have been added. Might be something worth showing here. These are the holes you need to add for the actual. Fittings, this is the screens go in and the fittings for the tank, the finger strainers. And this is going to be the fittings for the actual sight gauge for the tube, clear tube that's going to go through to show your fuel levels. 
Um, as far as the spark cutouts, I've done the spark cutouts kind of as it was on and only cut what I needed. So that's what that looks like. And the front, of course, doesn't need that. It has it in there. So uh, I've added the all aluminum for the pedal. And uh, if you've looked inside, you'll probably see how that looks and how it's set up in there. I've got everything tied off. So Anyway, that's it. That's all. Hopefully that helps everybody. I just got to turn that wing flat and I'm going to brush on the glue for the Stuart systems and I will uh, start laying the fabric on that wing tomorrow.